In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to set up your offer from beginning to end. There are a bunch of different sections, so feel free to fast forward or jump to the section that you either need to create or double check and make sure you've got everything right. All set, let's go. All right, let's work through the offer checkout process. And whether you're double checking an offer or creating one for the first time, you can follow along on the steps right here. So we are gonna go into Kajabi and we're gonna click on sales. Once you click on sales, you're gonna click on offers. Once you're on offers, you're going to click on new offer. Or if you're checking an existing offer, you would choose from the title below. So if we are checking an offer, we can say offers December 21. You can select the product if you want to at this point. You do not have to. You can easily remove it after the fact. Payment type, we can decide. Again, we can change this after the fact. So if you're not quite sure or you're playing around, don't worry, none of this is carved in stone. When you have your first boxes filled in, click Create. This will make your offer. Now, we're gonna go back to offers because if you are simply editing or double checking an offer, you would be on your offers page and then you would just click on whatever offer you are working with and then you can edit from here. Once you have an offer, they work exactly the same whether you're making a new one or editing an old one. So let's open up our testing offer that we have right here. And you'll see the product is right here in the middle. If you change your mind and you wanna remove the product, you simply click the X, that will remove it. When the product needs to be added, you click add product. And you can add as many products as you would like. Keep in mind that once someone purchases an offer with a product, it is theirs and you have to manually remove it from them at a later date. So that is adding and removing your products. Now the product access area, this is used in a variety of different ways. I'm not going to walk through all the different strategy pieces, but if you are pre-selling an offer, and the product isn't ready, you can use this begin access at a specific date. Or if you have a group of people and they all need to start at the same time, this is the field that you may use. If you want to restrict access to the product for a specific amount of days, I am not a fan of lifetime access in any situations. And so you'll see when we get to purchase terms that Restricting access, providing a set limit on the product is something that I'm a fan of, both business and legally. This is the field that you can use. The post-purchase area, this is when the payment has been successful, where do you want to send people? I recommend you choose an existing landing page. The existing landing page allows you to customize and roll out the red carpet experience for the person that has just purchased. And so you simply select the thank you page that you have that makes sense for that offer and choose that in this section. The post-purchase email, again, many different ways you can do this, different strategies, different facts and circumstances. If you don't know what you want to do specifically, leave it as the default email. Don't start messing around with any of these options until you know specifically the experience you're trying to create, and then you can modify it far easier. 
This ensures on the default that they're going to get the basic information that they need. You won't accidentally leave anything out. And as you grow in your comfort level, as you are building more things in Kajabi and you understand the experience you want to use, you have additional flexibility in terms of choosing what you want the post-purchase email to be. Automations. In the automations section, there are so many different things that are available. Again, depending on what you are doing, your comfort level, all of those pieces, please don't go crazy with automations unless you know exactly what you are doing. If you do know what you're doing, then you, this is the area that you would add your automations into. On automations, if you go to click the additional condition button and it says you need to upgrade, I would highly recommend upgrading sooner rather than later. This additional condition function is the equivalent of hiring a very, very good assistant. Currently, it is $50 more a month. You can't hire anyone in your business to help you for $50 a month. So this adds many different capabilities and is honestly the best reason to upgrade in Kajabi to being on the middle plan that includes additional conditions. You also get extra products and stuff like that, but this is the, this is your assistant. This is a strong digital assistant and I highly recommend getting additional conditions on your account as soon as possible. If you click the button and it lets you choose them, then you already have it on your plan. So if you can select things and you don't get an upgrade message, then you already have additional conditions. All right, under offer status, this is where you can move your offer into draft or published and get the link directly to the offer. So when the offer is published, it can be purchased. Published equals purchased. When the offer is on draft, it cannot be purchased, but you can cl still collect dollars. Draft, dollars. <laughs> published, purchased. For instance, if you have an offer that people purchased six months ago, but you no longer want to sell it, you move it to draft. You can still collect the dollars. Draft, dollars, deposited, published, purchased, paying you. That's an easy way to remember them. The get link, I always recommend when you're making your offer that you choose to copy this offer and add it if you are using Trello to your offer checkout card. So I would click copy here and then I would add it to my Trello card. Under offer details, this is where you're gonna edit the image and the pricing. So the title is what your customers and the people that are purchasing a published offer see. The internal title is what you on the admin side of your site see. So these titles can match, they can be different. I do not use the description field on Kajabi offers ever. Under the image, you would simply select your image. If you've used an image recently, it will show up in your image picker. If not, you can always upload from a variety of locations. So we're going to upload this image right now. And under payment type, this is where you can double check or you can change if you need to. So let's say that we decide to change to multiple payments. I can make the multiple payments be two, and then you wanna make sure you click your mouse outside of this box. Oops, sorry, payment amount. We'll make that 50, click outside, 
number of payments to. You'll see Kajabi tells you it has to be between 2 and 12. 1 would be a one-time payment and more than 12 would need to be two different offers or a recurring payment. You also select your currency on the right hand side. Now this currency might be different for depending on where your business is located and where your customers are. So if you want to have offers that are in the Canadian dollar and the US dollar, you simply need to make two different offers. You can specify what currency based on what offer. You cannot have multiple currencies on a single offer. You can have as many multiple offers as you would like for multiple currencies. Now, the custom price text here, if you decide to use it, definitely put it in save it and preview. Depending on what design you have put on the offer, you may need to morph this text a little bit. If you are just starting Kajabi, I don't recommend messing with it. You don't need to. It will be clear on the checkout page what the payment options are. Under payment providers, anything that you have connected to your account will show up here. Stripe and or PayPal are both integrations on Kajabi. I only have Stripe linked to this test account. Under limiting the offer, this is where you can decide to limit quantity that is purchased by putting in a limit. Let's say there's only 10 seats available in your mastermind. Put in the 10, when limit is reached, go to, here you will want a landing page that you are using as a sold out page. So let's see, put in, just put, pick one of my test pages there. That is where you would indicate that. Now, the time limit, you can use this so that, let's say you are closing your cart at midnight, you can set the date for that offer to expire at midnight. I gave up closing my cart at midnight years ago. I close it at noon because I'm awake at noon. And if there's any issues, I can take care of them in the middle of the day. So I gave up closing at midnight a very, very long time ago. But this will allow you to turn your offer automatically go back to draft when this is reached. So when the date is reached, again, you will go to an expired page or a landing page. I recommend choosing a landing page because you can customize the experience. The other option, which is the expired page, is incredibly ugly. And I can just show you that right here. Incredibly ugly. And we're going to have to click save in order to preview that page. So we'll click save. I always recommend using landing pages as thank you pages, sold out pages, expired pages, whatever you want, because the option for there, there's your page. Now, obviously, I could have fancied it up with some text, but the options available here to customize that expired page are nothing compared to using one of your beautiful pages. In fact, you could simply clone the sales page, hide a few sections, and then have a beautiful thank you page, sold out page, and or limited quantity page is reached. So that will take care of all of your offer details, which is right here. Now we're going to move on to the checkout area. So underneath checkout, you can choose the new checkout design by turning it on or off. Play around, see which one you enjoy better. When you're starting, you're just going to move right down this left-hand side of the column.
we're going to click on offer details. So offer details, the title is pulling from the initial title that you gave the offer. You can choose to enable the banner or turn it off. It's that large blue section on this offer. You can obviously pick your own banner image. You can also change the height of it. So if I wanna say enable the banner and I could change this to 300 and then click save, it will be a very large section. If I made it 50 and then clicked save, it will be a smaller section. So you can play around with what you are doing there. Also test it on desktop and on mobile devices so that you know how it's going to look. You can always add a video. The video and or the image displays in this block. You may not have both. Absent custom coding. Everything I'm showing you is not custom coded. So here you have the checkout copy right here. Again, keep in mind, always test it on your mobile device so that you know exactly the experience that you are creating for your customer. When you're done, make sure you click save. And then you're gonna click back. Primary color. So here you can pop in, you can adjust the color. We could make it purple. When you have the color that you want, click save. And you will see that on this page, it's showing up right here as the complete my purchase. When we're done, we're going to click back. Extra contact info. Underneath the extra contact info, you can select or deselect any of these options. If you do, and we're gonna click save, so you'll see it display over here on the right-hand side. Keep in mind that any information you're collecting is governed by data privacy laws. So you have to make sure when you are collecting anything that your footer shows up on the offer checkout page. So it's not displaying, so we wanna make sure we click save, we click back, and then we click footer navigation. When we click here, we want to make sure that we have the footer. I'm going to just put the standard default on here and click save that has your privacy terms linked. So I would have all of my legal terms. You can see that on my site. That is what has to be displayed there. So make sure that you have your footer turned on when you are at the extra contact info place. Here, also keep in mind, collect the data you need, but don't over collect. When you are adding this custom field, if you're using these, these are not easy to pull out of Kajabi. So if you are using additional custom fields, please make sure that you are turning on a tool like Zapier, such that when the information is filled out on the Kajabi offer checkout page, that it is going somewhere so that you can use it. It will be stored inside Kajabi, but it will live inside, and we're gonna take a momentary pop out to the dashboard, it will live under the people tab and it will live under that person's account. So if we open up one of these and underneath info, this is where any additional fields information will show up. Not easy to use, not easy to interact with. So if you are adding things, and I know many people do, make sure that you are turning on Zapier and getting that information out of Kajabi to where you need to interact with it. So we're gonna go back into the checkout. We're going to go back into the extra contact info. You can also uncheck things. So we can uncheck, 
don't worry if you uncheck name and password, Kajabi will still collect it at the step immediately following the successful payment. So they will always get their username and password. If you click it at this location, then they will create that before they check out. So when you have it the way you want it, click save and then click back. service agreement so under service agreement this is so incredibly important when you are running a business you need purchase terms you have to have them that is definitely the attorney in me it's also the business owner in me the professional in me the protector you are likely creating this business so that you have time and financial freedom that you have legacy wealth for your family and to not have purchase terms is a huge mistake now we won't have time to get into all the specifics, but let me just show you very quickly how easy it is to put these on your offers. So I am going to pull up my Bizzle box option and Bizzle is all the business and legal to run an online business. This, when people land on my offer checkout page, right down here is the service agreement in this section it is okay sign, sign in it's recognizing me as the admin so let me just get logged in but that'll happen too as you test your own thing so it's why i don't edit that those pieces out so that when they happen to you you know that it's totally normal this is where you put your purchase terms. So when you purchase Bizzlebox, when you purchase the name of the offer that they are purchasing from you, these are the terms. Now, when I click this box, you're gonna see that it opens up a Google Doc. That's what I've decided to use as my URL location for my contract terms. You can also take these terms and put them on a Kajabi page so that it continues the aesthetic and the look of your offers. But it is imperative. You have to have purchase terms. So if you do not have purchase terms, please, you can check out Bizzlebox. You can check out another attorney's product. Get stuff from people you know, like, and trust, and then turn them on. So when you are on your Kajabi page, right here, this is my preferred way of when you purchase, and then you could easily put insert name of the offer right there. You agree to these purchase terms. And then you simply need to highlight this, click the insert edit link button, and put the URL in. So I can do that easily by clicking over to my Google Doc, clicking on share, clicking on copy the link. Once I have that link, again, it could be a Kajabi landing page that you're using as your purchase terms page. Put that link in, have it open in a new window so they don't pop away from your offer. Click OK and click save. This way, when they purchase and you know that you've linked it, you have covered yourself. You've also created a great user experience. Now, if you're using order bumps and upsells, you also need to make sure that your purchase terms are covering the different availabilities of the other offers that you're providing at the checkout stage. So that is, you must use the purchase terms area and that is the best way that I know to do it. Testimonials. So here, this would be a very easy way to add in one, maybe two. Remembering that if they've just come from a strong sales page, you likely had testimonials on the sales page. So you could put in a few different quotes. You could put in a few sentences, um, add sentences. Oh, I can't spell. Ten. Here, author 
person who loves you. Click save. And then right here, you'll see how those blocks look on that area. Footer navigation. So footer nav bar, this is where you need to, at a bare minimum, have your privacy policy displayed. Sorry, I should put on my offer. I have a couple different footers over here on the test site. This is not where I recommend putting the purchase terms. I do not recommend this. I see many people do this and they're doing it in terms of using this box that says, I agree to the conditions on this page. And then you're asking people to make sure that they scroll down here. That is not as strong as having it here and having the terms right in this view area. The reason for that is the standard is often, the legal standard is often that of a reasonable person. If I'm on my mobile device and depending on how it's displaying, depending on how you might have added to this page, it's very easy to say, oh, well, the terms were right there when I purchased versus there was a box there and I totally didn't see this down here. So there's no need to open yourself up to that argument. Privacy policy, yes, absolutely needs to be in your footer. Purchase terms, I recommend keeping them in that box, which you have seen on that section of the video already. So I'm gonna click save, and then I'm going to click back. Order bump. If you are offering an order bump, then you would choose from the offer right here and choose your order bump offer that you're doing, add your text here, and then click save. When you do that, you will see that the order bump appears right below the terms and conditions. This allows people to add on the order bump to the offer. When you're adding on an order bump, I like to think of it as if they're purchasing, for instance, a coloring program with you, you're buying the coloring books, would you like to add on the markers? It makes complete sense, it's a no-brainer, it's easy to add that order bump before they complete their purchase. So the order bump is happening prior to the purchase happening for the very first time. When you have your order bump the way that you want it, you can click save and then click back. Upsell. You can click on the upsell button. I am personally not a fan of the upsell option in Kajabi because to add it, you have very limited ways of providing it. So we'll just add in this right here, testing, upsell. You can put in an additional subtitle, testing, subtitle for the upsell. Add your description here and now you can put in a video option. So you can add in your video. We're just gonna pick a recent one. Okay. You can change the wording, add this on now, or no, thank you. And then click add the upsell. Now, you can't add an order bump and you can't add an upsell to a zero offer. So also keep that in mind if you are granting offers or if you are providing coupon codes. So now we flip from active to inactive. So when it's active, then it can be seen. You can also preview to see what this will look like. And it is right 
there. Okay, again, if you are using the upsell at this stage where it is the first purchase has been complete, now they are adding on, make sure that your purchase terms cover original purchase, order bump, and or upsells. You can on the page here, if we click on the upsell right here, I can add that in. So when you purchase this, you agree to these terms. So if they are different terms, you could link to different terms. If they are the same, they would be covered at the original purchase, what had just happened. So we're gonna highlight this, link, put the terms in, click like that, make sure we save it, and then we're going to preview it again right here. Okay, so now you do have the purchase terms on this page. That is how the upsell works, and when you're done, you just click back to offer setup. Additional settings. So underneath additional settings, you have a few choices. The first is to send members to a third party email provider. This is if you are using MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, ConvertKit, any of those options, you would choose this. If you are new, do not feel the need to go use a different email provider. You can absolutely use Kajabi email. There are pros and cons to every communication system. So keep your life easy, focus on selling, getting comfortable with that. You can always fine tune your tools as you go along. The second one, which is get notified when a purchase has been made. This I definitely recommend turning on. So here you can put in your email address. You can also put in, you know, uh, your, I'm gonna just put your cheer, leaders email at so what i mean by your cheerleaders email is people that are supporting your business they cheer you on in my instance it would be my husband and my kids i have always included my husband's email when purchases are made because it was always he loves getting the messages so you can add in your own you can add in others they don't necessarily have to be an employee or a contractor or an assistant. They can simply be your cheerleader. So that is a section and how I use that section myself. Cart abandonment emails. You can turn this email on. You can choose your settings. So choose the time that you would like to use. You can always experiment and change this as needed. Now, the cart abandonment email is a system-wide email. It is not offer specific currently. So if you click to edit the reminder email template, when you click this button, what you may not know is that Kajabi moved you over to your settings tab in the lower left-hand corner and brought you into the system email templates. These are system wide. They are not product specific, person specific, or offer specific. So if I choose to edit, for instance, this cart abandonment email, and I click on the edit button, this will send for any offer on my Kajabi site when I enable the cart abandonment emails. So as I've said repeatedly, if you are new to this, don't mess with the defaults. The defaults will keep you covered when you know what you're doing, when you know what experience you want to create. Editing these is not a big deal, but it is not an area that I would personally mess with if I was just starting in Kajabi and if I had multiple products and multiple offers on my Kajabi site which most of us do. So to get back to where you were, you need to click sales, and then you need to go back into the offer that you are working on. 
And then you can go back to additional settings, which is where that cart abandonment was. And you'll see I didn't click save. So I need to turn it back on. I can put your cheerleader email here at hit the return key so that it turns gray. And yes, I want to send a cart abandonment one hour later. And I'm going to hit save before I move down to the final section right here, which is affiliate commission. So if you have the affiliate option on your account, you can turn this on and you can put in the affiliate percentage. If you don't have the affiliate option, don't worry about this at all. And for those of you that do, think of the, this affiliate box as a tracking mechanism. Kajabi does not do automatic payouts. You do not want people to do automatic payouts for your affiliate. It will simply track the affiliate commissions on under that portion of the Kajabi site. So if you say, well, I pay $20 a referral, it doesn't matter. Put in the number one under the percentage because you're going to really add up the lines on the CSV file, the Excel file, the spreadsheet looking file, and adjust it accordingly. So you don't have to get panicked about this percentage. If you're not doing affiliate, simply turn that off and then click save. When you have everything on this page done, then you're going to click back to offer setup. The more tab. So underneath here, you can look for the clone button, webhooks, and analytics and stats. We're going to click on the analytics and stats. You can see information about the offer as it comes in right here. You can also get this information if you are using Stripe. You can absolutely get that information here. You can also get information about all the payments from the sidebar if you click on payments. And now I can sort on a variety of filters under this option. So there are ways for you to sort and access your information as it is easiest for you to do. You can click back to your offer at any point in time. So here's our offer. We'll click back to this one. And that brings you through all of the pieces of the offer checkout.